Hi, my name is Fleur Bauer. I am a postdoc at the University of Amsterdam, and the work I'm presenting here was done in collaboration with Professor Helene Slachter, Niels Kloosterman, and Johannes Varenvoort. And in this study, we looked at temporal expectations in rhythm. Now, to efficiently process sensory information, the brain continuously tries to predict the timing of incoming events. And these temporal expectations then optimize perception and behavior. And of course, one domain in which temporal expectations are ubiquitous is musical rhythm, in which predictions about when a sound will occur also allow us to synchronize to music together. Now, rhythms often contain a regular periodic beats, as well as predictable patterns of tones. And these two possible sources of temporal expectations are the focus of the work I present here. Now, to illustrate this, I will now play you an example rhythm from our study with a regular beat but unpredictable pattern. To create this sequence, we concatenated varying rhythmic patterns that all have a regular beat, depicted here as the orange events. Now, you can tap along to the beat in this rhythm, but you cannot predict each single tone in the pattern. The next example rhythm has a predictable pattern depicted as the purple events, but no regular beats. Here we looked one identical pattern that is irregular. So for this rhythm, it is very hard to find the beat, but it would be possible to tap along to the pattern. And then finally, we can create random rhythms without a beat and with unpredictable patterns by concatenating varying irregular patterns. Here, it is hard to predict the timing of sounds at all. Now, it's unclear whether temporal expectations based on regular beats and predictable patterns depend on similar mechanisms in the brain. Here, specifically, we aim to assess whether entrainment may underlie beat-based as well as pattern-based expectations. Theories of entrainment predict effects of these expectations outlasting the physical stimulation, and therefore we looked at effects of temporal expectations after a rhythm stops. We played participants sequences containing beat-based or pattern-based structure, or with neither, the random rhythms, and these sequences were then followed by a silence period. We looked at several different markers of temporal expectations in the silence period. First, we performed a behavioral experiment. We presented participants with probe tones in the silence period, and the timing of the probe tones depicted here in the red dotted line varied systematically. Some coincided with expected moments based on the beat, here are the light orange bars, and some coincided with expected moments based on the pattern, here are the light purple bars. Participants rated how well the probe tones fitted the preceding rhythm. In these graphs, the y-axis depicts the rating normalized compared to the random condition, which we used as a baseline. The x-axis depicts the position of the probe tone. Now, in the beat-based condition on the left, you can see the effect of expectations well into the silence window. To illustrate this, consider responses for probe tones at 1200 milliseconds after the end of the preceding rhythm. Probe tones at this position, which was on the beat, were rated as better fitting than at the times around this position, which are off the beat, creating an inverted U-shaped response pattern. And these fluctuations in ratings thus follow the beat-based expectations. For the pattern-based expectations, the effects of expectations were only visible in the beginning of the silence window and did not really last after the first expected time point. We also found that the ratings correlated in a systematic way with the musical background of the participants. Here you see the correlation between the normalized ratings, again on the y-axis, and the musical training of participants on the x-axis. To illustrate the relationship, consider responses for probes at 780 milliseconds after the end of the rhythm. This position was expected based on the pattern, but not on the beats. And here, more musical training was associated with higher ratings in the pattern-based condition. At the same time, more musical training was associated with lower ratings in the beat-based condition. Thus, for both types of expectations, participants with more musical training were better able to use the structure of the rhythm to guide their ratings. And in line with this, at 1200 milliseconds, which was on the beat, we find a positive association between musical training and the ratings in the beat-based condition. However, the relationship was absent in the pattern-based condition, while this position was also expected based on the pattern. This again suggests that the effects of the pattern subsided earlier than those of the beat, also for musically trained participants. Now, in a second experiment, we recorded EEG from the silence period. First, we looked at a time domain event related response associated with temporal expectations, the contingent negative variations, or CNV. 
This ERP response is thought to peak at expected moments in time. This is the ERP for each condition. Time zero is the onset of the last tone of the rhythm. And you can see a CNV-like deflection peaking between 300 and 450 milliseconds after the last tone for the pattern-based and random conditions here in purple and gray. And the scalp distributions indeed look like the central distribution that's normally seen for a CNV. There are two things that I would like to highlight. First, there does not seem to be a CNV for the beat-based condition. And this suggests that maybe the CNV could be specific to expectations for patterns, not beat. Also, the CNV does not peak at the next expected time in the pattern, which would be 780 milliseconds, but rather peaks at what is approximately the average inter-onset interval used in the pattern. And the pattern-based expectations may therefore be based on learning a distribution of intervals over a longer period of time. In a second analysis, we looked at spectral power in the EEG signal at the frequencies most prevalent in the sound itself. So it's a frequency tagging analysis. These plots depict the frequencies present in the sound signal for each condition. In the beat-based condition, there are clear peaks at the frequency of the beat, which is 1.67 Hertz and its harmonics. For the pattern-based condition, the peaks are more distributed and the highest peak is at 2.22 Hertz. Now, the prediction of entrainment theories is that we should see enhanced power at these frequencies even after the rhythm stops. This graph shows results from a Fourier transform on the EEG data from the silence window and the scale distributions for power at 1.67 Hertz, which is the beat frequency. The highlighted electrodes indicate where power in the beat-based condition was larger than in the other conditions at this frequency. And you can also see this in the average data. This is consistent with persistent entrainment at this frequency. What is interesting is that we do not see these effects for expectations based on the pattern. At 2.22 Hertz, there are no differences between conditions. Now, in addition to the frequency tagging analysis, we also looked at the data using multivariate decoding. In the decoding analysis, for each time point in the silence, we tested whether we could use a classifier to decode above chance which type of rhythm participants had listened to before. This graph from an influential paper by Dahana and King shows examples of patterns that can be expected in decoding analyses based on the different types of underlying neural activity. Now, often decoding is best when the training time for the algorithm, which is here on the y-axis, and the testing time, which is on the x-axis, are identical. You can then see clear above chance decoding on the diagonal of a plot, such as here. However, assuming that activity would be similar at all expected moments in time, such as on every beat, we could predict that decoding would also be above chance if we train um, at a beat and test at a different beat, even if it is at a different time. And this would result in an oscillating pattern, as is depicted here. And such a pattern would show lasting effects of expectations in the silence. Now, here you see the actual decoding results from our experiments. Um, and you can see above chance decoding in the red colors and significant clusters are indicated by the black lines. As you can see, we can decode above chance from the silence what participants were listening to before. However, the decoding is not specific to expected moments, neither is it recurrent in time. And therefore we think it is probably based on task related differences in the EEG signal. Just to show you how this method could actually work for this type of data, here are the same plots from one participant that did show the predicted pattern in the beat-based condition. As you can see here, decoding was not only above chance when training and testing at the same times, but also when training at beat times and testing at different beat times. To sum up, we show with a diverse set of methods that expectations based on a beat and expectations based on a rhythmic pattern may have different neural mechanisms. Behaviorally, the effects of beat-based expectations last longer than those of pattern-based expectations. Tentatively, we can speculate that pattern-based, but not beat-based expectations, can be indexed by the CNV, while beat-based, but not pattern-based expectations, rely on entrainment. Now, if you want to know more, there's a preprint on these experiments on BioArchive, and I'm very much looking forward to discussing this further with the RPPW community, so feel free to contact me for any questions and for a chat. And thank you for listening.